So thank you, Stephen, for joining on a short notice and uh, you have given us time even you have a very tight schedule. Actually, uh, the problem with the students or uh, the problem we are facing uh, at the moment is we have very diverse, uh, as a students, we have very diverse uh, information and uh, we don't have any clear pictures to tell the students. And students have a lot of questions like sometimes uh, from the help desk, they get the email that you are eligible to apply for the residence permit. And sometimes they get email that you are not eligible. And sometimes they get that uh, if you are online, you can't apply. Sometimes they get that if you are online, but you are partially online, you can apply. So we basically need your uh, expert opinion about it, that uh, what students should do and what it actually means. Sure, I will do my best to explain this because it's not 100% clear for me either exactly how the Board of Migration, Migration Agency will act in uh, some different uh, scenarios. But what I can tell officially, it said that if the majority of the per period uh, or half of the period which you are applying for residence permit are totally on distance learning, uh, then you will not get a residence permit. So basically for us as a university who has decided that the full autumn will be distance learning, if a student applies for a one year residence permit, 10 months, meaning two semesters, then according to the rules they have said now, you will not get residence permit. But if you're admitted to a two-year program, then you apply for a two-year residence permit because there is also a pilot project at the moment uh, where uh, students can get the two-year residence permit if you meet all the requirements regarding that. Then the majority of the period you're applying for will be on campus studies. And then you can get your residence permit. So if you apply for a two year, then it's possible. If you apply for a one year, according to the rule, not possible. But then on the other hand, I've also seen students already got their residence permit. And this is probably due to, I mean, one year residence permit based on, the, on the, this rule. And therefore, I think that it's not still all clear for all officers at the migration agency. I mean, in our situation, we obviously still think it's totally perfect and good if students come to, to campus during the autumn, even though it will be majority distance learning. It's just that, that due to the very unsure situation, they took the decision of giving everything distance learning also during the autumn. And is there any chance that they will revert their decision to make it on, on campus again? I don't think so, unfortunately, because uh, uh, due to that, uh, all information, everything based on that it will be distant learning. I think this will be the version, unfortunately. And if a student is going to apply, he has admitted in two years program and he want to apply for residence permit, what will be the starting date he will write on the residence for the residence permit? Uh, I mean, the starting date will still be the beginning of September. Uh, so, so when the, the when the semester starts. So the same for as if you apply for one year. So it's gonna be from uh, end of August or start of September, whatever their program is uh, when it's a starting date. Exactly. And if uh, like right now they have decided to be on campus, Linus University. And uh, what are the chances for the second semester to be on campus or to be online? Well, I, I think 99% for sure the spring will be on campus. Uh, because in my eyes, it was a little quick decision to decide to take the full semester distance learning. And in my eyes, it should be, have been done differently. Uh, I think more more uh, flexible semester with the partly uh, distance and partly on campus would have been the best decision because that's the kind of decision that most other universities has taken or will take I think after the new regulations from the government but uh, 
that obviously means that spring semester will be on campus for us. And uh, I have seen a couple of emails uh, sent by the university to the student who are ongoing student uh, that the university will open for them on campus even for autumn 2020, September 2020. Yeah, so all programs which are starting from the second year, it will be on campus uh, education for these programs. So it's only for new programs. Uh, given this, the autumn, which will will be distance learning. And this is obviously based on the fact that there will be a lot of travel restrictions and a different situation on different embassies uh, around the world. So I think that the, the, the management wanted to take a decision which made it possible for all students to still study. Uh, but then they didn't really consider that the migration agency would not accept students for residence permit based on this. So nobody could come. Unfortunately, this is, I think they will stick to that decision now. Ah, oh, but it's, it's a, let me make one thing clear for myself that there are a couple of students who came here in uh, uh, spring and uh, now in autumn they want to continue their studies in campus in here in Bekwa or in Kalmar. So according to this rule, they, their classes will be on campus or? No, they have the, to be if it's, a new, it's, it's a newly starting program, it will be distance. But I know that also uh, the international office is having a communication towards the migration agents regarding how they will handle that kind of situation. Because obviously we don't, want to these students to to have to leave Sweden uh, due to that they cannot get residence permit uh, based on that they are now starting a programs uh, that are supposed to be distance learning uh, but I cannot 100% tell you what the migration agency says in that, that situation but I, I think it will be cleared out in the coming weeks and if a student has already paid the tuition fee and uh, he don't want or she don't want to continue the studies because of online, they want to study on campus from the day first. So are they eligible to apply for refund? Sure, they can ask for a refund. That's no problem. Uh, still, as what I understand, the, the international office has also has decided that the the administration fee will remain. Uh, I don't think it's a good decision, but unfortunately it's not in my hands. So there will still be an administration fee of 5,000 Swedish crowns. And what is the last date to apply for refund if uh, they want, they applied visa and for example, they get refused? Well, it's, it's uh, before the semester start. And if the semester starts, for example, and the, in the middle of semester, let's say in September or in October, they get a visa refusal for the whole program. So can they apply a refund for the whole semester or they have to apply for the remaining courses? Uh, I'm pretty sh sure that it's only gonna be for the remaining courses in that case. Uh, if I would recommend everyone to apply for reimbursement before the semester start because it also takes a while for us to handle reimbursements and that means that basically ask for reimbursement if you have not got the decision before the semester starts and then if you by any chance would get a positive decision before you have got your money back and you have also um, been able to start your studies or whatever, uh, then you can revoke your reimbursement application. As you have uh, told us earlier that a couple of students has already got the residence permit. Have they got the residence permit starting from uh, autumn semester or they got the residence permit from uh, spring 2021? From autumn. And I have heard several students, as I said before, which has applied for two year residence permit and has met the requirements for that, uh, which has got residence permit also. Uh -huh, okay. So it be, 
so it means it is possibility is there that if student uh, uh, got the residence permit in uh, from autumn and uh, there is no travel ban they can come here, they can came to university here and study keep studying online yep so i mean campus is totally going to be open due to that all the national programs the programs taught in swedish will be on campus uh, education from the autumn so library will be open uh, university buildings will be open and everything regarding this uh, and is there any possibility to extend the tuition fee last date? Uh, I think it is uh, 15th of uh, June. Uh, as for now, no decision regarding that has been taken. I don't think that they want to push for this any longer. No. Okay, so the last date is last date. It's already extended along. Yes, I'm. I'm 99% sure of that. I, I can double check with the financial department, but I think so. It might be that they will be flexible if you have a discussion with them uh, based on the fact that the autumn now will be on distance. Let's say that you, for example, will not apply for residence permit for the autumn. Uh, in that case, obviously, it's not as rushed uh, with these deadlines, but I wouldn't rely on that it's still okay. So you need to have a communication with the financial department in that case and make, get an okay for it. And Hassan, you have any question? Uh, you have raised the hand. Yeah. Uh, hi, Stephen. Uh, hi, Junaid. I have a question. Uh, uh, I am admitted for a two-year program and I'm eligible for as a pilot project for two-year resident permit. So if even though the autumn semester is going to be online, can I apply that two-year resident permit now, considering that uh, I can get two-year permit and most of the studies for upcoming three semesters will be on campus. So yes. am I eligible to apply it right now for resident permit or I should apply it in October or November for January intake? Yes, according to answers I've seen from the residence permit, it's okay and according to to students I've heard who got the residence permit, the answer is yes. Okay, because there is some uncertainty, uh, Stephen. If we are applying for resident permit in October, because I have got, uh, I have seen an email from uh, migration agency saying student that you can apply for uh, uh, spring intake in October. I have a question like, if migration is going to refuse your visa application in October and you have taken your first semester online, uh, what will be your future? Like you have spent money on your first semester fee and you are not getting your visa for second semester and you won't be able to attend it on campus. So what will be your future that you have attended first semester online and you have been denied entry uh, for second semester? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, but obviously that kind of things happens uh, always. Uh, so you could say that if you don't think that you will have the money in order to cover and prove that you will get the residence permit, I wouldn't take the risk of putting yourself in that kind of situation. Uh, because if you study during the autumn and you prove that you manage all the studies and get all your credits during the autumn, I'm pretty sure that the Board of Migration will see that as a time who have the correct study intentions. And that means as long as you have the money in order to cover uh, your second semester and the rest of the coming year, they would give you residence permit. So it's very small chance, I think, that you will be put in that kind of situation. Uh, Hassan, I think these yeah. are the questions we have discussed uh, at very early stage of uh, this conversation. Okay, uh, I was just uh, closing my conversation. So I just need uh, Stephen recommendation that uh, we should apply resident permit now, uh, like for a two year uh, program or we should apply it in October, uh, considering that we will attend uh, semester in spring. I think that it's a 50-50 call regarding that, that if you, want to save some money and wait, come during, for the spring, uh, study distance learning during the autumn. If you really want to come to Sweden now during the autumn, apply for your two-year residence permit. 
Thank you, Steven. Uh, and uh, uh, the last date is the 15th of June. So what it means that uh, either a student have to pay tuition fee until 15th of June or uh, the tuition fee should be credited in the university's account until 15th of June. I think paid before, but let me double check. Because normally if you pay uh, through bank from Pakistan, uh, it take normally five, four, five days before it uh, credited in the account. Yep. Uh, so should we apply for resident permit or do we go for a refund? Uh, I think this is the question we have already asked that uh, either we, either student should apply for residence permit or go for a refund. If you think that your decision is not going to come until start <laughs> of September, then it is better to apply for a refund instead of uh, losing the money uh, for the first study period or uh, but administrative charges will remain there. So either you apply, oh, it's, it's another question in my mind actually. Uh, if a student apply in the middle of semester for refund, so either it will be only tuition fee deduction or the both tuition fee plus administrative charges. Uh, let me see here. Well, sorry, sorry, what was your question? If a student apply in the middle of semester of for the refund, uh, the university will detect only the tuition fee he has studied or the tuition fee plus uh, administrative charges. Um, there is written directly in the reimbursement rules that you will, they will deduct also both the administration fees and part of the tuition fees. And if a student has a scholarship, do you think that migration board, migration workers will give some consideration that they have a scholarship? Not regarding this kind of distance uh, rule. Uh, but uh, as far my understanding is, if you have a scholarship as well, you can uh, better prove yourself a good student uh, as an argument when you have an interview. That, uh, yeah, but, but, but the rule regarding distance learning is still around. So it's, it's, it's like, a, it's a decision that, that, that it's a rule that they cannot really bend it, based on uh, the, the regulations they have from the government and it needs to be changed in that case. And that's why they cannot be flexible regarding that the majority of the studies need to be online. So that's the only reason why they cannot uh, accept uh, students uh, based on the fact that everything is online. Yeah, but uh, Shero, uh, Shah, uh, Shah Rose, I think you have, uh, you are admitted in two years program. So you then don't- you can apply for your two year and then it's the same kind of uh, situation. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have to worry about, I think it is uh, the point of worrying for the student who are admitted in a one semester program or a one year program. Exactly. The student, the student who are admitted in two year program, uh, they are out of this uh, danger line or uh, this uh, uncertain situation of online and on-campus situation. And uh, do you have any other question? Because uh, today uh, the main question for the uh, this session was that either student should apply uh, for residence permit or not. And uh, what if I conclude, what I understood is that if you are admitted in two year programs, then things are okay for you. But if you are admitted in one year program, then uh, it might be hard for you to get the residence permit for the first semester. But in the second semester, when, when university will be on campus, then you can apply for it. And yeah. all of it. If you got a residence permit, could be travel before the, uh, if the student got the residence permit and can he travel to campus even the classes are online? Sorry? Uh, if a student got a residence permit and classes are online, can they still come and live here in campus? Yeah, sure. No problem at all. Campus will be totally open, as I said, for majority of students. 
uh, I mean, it's open for any students, but it's just that campus studies will be for only the national programs, but for the international, it will be distance. Uh, for all the new uh, students and the ongoing is on campus. Exactly. Uh, one student uh, has, uh, I think he applied late for accommodation because if you apply in time for the accommodation, you will never get this kind of email. He said that he got an email that university denied to provide him an accommodation. Uh, that sounds a bit strange because uh, I think that they still have a like a queue, so you can ask you to ask to be put in the queue. And as as for my experience, I can say this year you will have a better chance to get accommodation. Because Most likely. I applied for a component first of May, but I received an email that your your application has been denied for accommodation. Has he paid his Have you paid your tuition fee? Yeah, he said that he paid his tuition fee uh, up to fourteenth of May and pay tuition fee due date and. Uh, It's, it's, it's quite strange. Uh, even I haven't seen this before that they straight away denied to provide the accommodation. They always put in queue. Please uh, send, the, send, the, uh, send the, your, um, your, uh, your email further and then we can look at it. But oh. I mean, yeah, that sounds, I will double check this with the international office. Aha, uh -huh. it's, uh, uh, Stephen, can you read uh, these messages as well? Yeah, because there are, yeah, because there are a couple of messages and I have to read, uh, like, uh, I think it will be a repetition. He said that uh, every international student has got email today, refusal of accommodation. And uh, it's been mentioned also that you are international student and will not grant a residence permit due to online studies mode. Yeah, that sounds very strange by the international office. I will communicate with them and I will give some information regarding this because I think that they, they think that nobody will get residence permit. But it seems like uh, if, if students have applied for a two year residence permit, they cannot really say that. So let me double check this. Okay, now they have uh, like the same uh, uh, same question. It's uh, repeating again and again, and uh, hopefully we will uh, get some information uh, in this week regarding this accommodation issue. And uh, as we got it, uh, I will let you know that uh, what is the answer of international office, or might be you will get emails from them with uh, updated information. Yes, I'm writing to a colleague now and asking about this also. And I think we have covered all the questions uh, which we are supposed to ask uh, Stephen today. And uh, I uh, requested him for the 30 minutes and we are almost uh, up to the line and we will not take uh, longer time of him. And uh, is, is there, a, I already paid and I want to refund and also don't want online. What should we do? How can I use the money next day? Uh, it's about the deferment. Uh, according to what the university said, they will not allow deferment, but I would double check it with the, with the, the international office before, uh, because I think also that the new last rule is a bit uh, confusing regarding this. Uh, and, and it's also, I think that actually, if you would, for example, be readmitted for the same program next year, you would be allowed to, to take and use your your money. So it's not like a deferment, but it's a risk, obviously, of not getting the money back. But you would probably have the possibility to study the program if you have not asked for deferment because you have already paid, but you never registered. Uh, but if you apply for a, re a deferment and, uh, for example, you get deferment and you took your admission for the next year and then you change your mind, 
after the deferment, can you get refund next year? I don't, no, I don't think so. No. So it means you have to choose very consciously if you are uh, going to apply for a deferment. Then you have, uh, basically you are going on a one way. Yes. It's very long, although this is not yet confirmed from the course coordinator that the competition will not be granted, please. Yeah, uh, actually uh, you got uh, uh, disconnected and uh, we have uh, disconnect uh, we have discussed this thing that uh, stephen will ask uh, international office about the accommodation yes and, uh, hopefully it will be revised yeah it sounds very strange and especially for for a uh, scholar sc scholarship holders uh, then everything is crystal clear regarding payment of tuition fee and uh, and living cost it's a very tricky question Someone asked that he is applied, uh, admitted in two year programs, but he applied residence permit for one year. Uh, no, you need to apply for a two year residence permit. And you need to prove your living costs for two years. Is it possible that you are admitted in two years program and you apply for one year residence permit? I'm not sure about it. If you are admitted to a two-year program... Uh, and you want to apply for only one year residence permit? You cannot get it. So you need to apply for a two-year residence permit. Uh, for the ne Can we go for the next semester instead of next year, the transfer fee to the next semester? Uh, next semester, no program start. So it's practically not possible to defer your admission or transfer your tuition fee to the second semester because uh, in Sweden there is September session is the main session where you have all the programs available. Yeah, exactly. So it's only autumn semesters. Okay. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much for your time. Now we are repeating the same questions and same things. And uh, thank you very much for the information and updated information. And uh, hopefully uh, when we will get the, fix this uh, accommodation problem, uh, students will get uh, the, the CN or the email from the international office as well. Yep. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. Bye-bye.